Just across from the exit, there's a chest with an axe. Uh, it's not a great axe, but it's... Actually, it is, in fact, a great axe, but it's not good. Uh, but it's worth money. Uh, you get here to the world map. The world map is not very big, unfortunately. This is not nearly as long a campaign as the original campaign, which is too bad, because it's so much better. And uh, we will go to Mulsantir, City Gate. Just ahead of us stand the gates of Mulsantir. You've been eviscerated, paralyzed, assaulted by spirits, and subjected to countless leagues of walking. How are you feeling? Well, there are various wise responses you can get. I'll just say I'm fine. I've brought you here to speak with Liana. She'll hopefully know what happened to you in the Barrow, and why. Liana is an associate of my mother, or so I've gathered. I've never met her or even heard of her until I was tasked to bring you to her. It's actually a lot more complicated than that, but we won't understand that until much later in the game. Uh, you can ask her about some stuff, but there's actually a couple ways to offend her and lose uh, influence, but we'll ignore those and just keep moving. These robes display my rank and affiliation as a Red Wizard, and the locals care very little for my people. As long as we're in Mulsantir, I shouldn't display my red robes. Give me a moment to adjust my attire. I think you've mistaken me for a horse and wagon. Speaking of horses and wagons, I was using the golem to carry stuff, and uh, the golem now is dead. Um, and I'm going to have to pick this stuff up. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, I really don't have any way around this. I am going to... It, far off in the distance here, you see this guy Shelvadar Noom. He's a merchant. I'm going to sell a lot of stuff to him. Uh, and uh, be right back. In this area, there are a couple of these little dirt mounds. They have some really inconsequential treasure. I'm not going to bother showing that. Uh, I'll be back after I've done some shopping. Shelvadar will give you a discount if you succeeded a bluff check. Uh, I can't. I mean, I have no skill in bluff. I do have some skill in appraise, though, so I'm just going to sell stuff off. Um, if you don't have skill in appraise, you might want to hold off on selling things until you can kind of set up some heroism and some int bonuses and try to get some better prices for stuff because there are two or three items in town I want to buy that are you know in the half a million gold range of costs. Um, I did buy one thing from Shelvadar which is this greater magic bag which just lets me carry more stuff. Behind Shelvadar is the gate to Molsentir proper. I'll fully explore this place later. Uh, there are a couple things that I'm not 100% sure but um, I'm pretty sure you can only do at certain points in the plot. Uh, after finishing the events of the Vale Theater, which we just passed, uh, new parts of the city open up, but that means that there are parts that are not there anymore. Uh, our first stop is the Sloop, which is a bar, which means we're going to get into a bar fight. Inside the Sloop, we're going to walk up to Thildren of the Eleven Chairs and his pirate friends, and... Uh, he accuses Sophia of being a fan, which she is, but, you know, uh, she appreciates that you stand up to defend her. And this is not an easy fight, actually. Um, to start with, we're going to use one of the, the more ridiculous spells, which is uh, Bigby's Forceful Hand, which isn't very good for killing things, but is fairly good at just making them not part of the fight anymore. And I'm going to recast... Mirror image, so... And let's get to Ice Storm. Ah, dang it. Unfortunately, it keeps on making me want to attack because they're moving around. Uh, yep. Yeah. And 
every time it forces me to attack, I'm not casting a spell. It would be really nice if you could actually disable attacks of opportunity. So I am actually starting to take some pretty serious damage here. I am going to cast... Um, Ethereal John. Drink up a potion. And then get back to it. And we are just about done here. Notice that I'm uh, breaking some chairs um, in the process. The game describes them as rickety chairs, so I guess the owner shouldn't be surprised if they are not surviving. Anyway, that's that fight. I, know I had to use a potion, which is not good, but, you know, hey, I made it through. It's not a simple fight, actually. So I'm going to clean up here. The main guy, that of the 11 chairs guy, drops some okay half-plate armor. I'm not actually going to bother using it. I mean, it's just stuff to sell, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, most of the merchants here will um, only pay a certain amount. Usually it's 25000 is the cap. So items that are worth a lot of money are just worth a lot of money. Um, Back in these in-room doors back here, there's a couple of uh, other treasures, nothing super important. Um, we'll have to come back here later. So I'm going to clean up what I can and meet you back in the town. Now that I'm looking back, there are two things I probably should have captured on screen there. There are some traps in one, behind one of those in-room doors. Also, one of those in-room doors, you actually have to pick the lock. You cannot cast knock, you cannot break it down. Uh, Kaji can do it with no trouble. I don't know why they bothered. There's another door like that later in the game. The other one later it requires some serious skill to pick. Um, there are some ways to, to get around it. I don't know if I'll actually be able to do it to, uh, if I'm not going to level Sophia. Probably not. Um, the other thing that's sort of worth mentioning, we'll see this again later, is the guy at the door of the, the bar charges you for every piece of furniture you so I was out a thousand gold for uh, not uh, not being respectful to the rules of the establishment. Anyway, the reason why I'm getting money pretty much is all about this Fairness Redemption item here, which is a belt. Uh, it gives plus eight regeneration, which is a lot. Uh, it's not better. I mean, you can make better items later, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. As you can see, I uh, had some trouble with some of the traps uh, since they're not. You're not in combat, you can just die and resurrect, and it's not a big deal. Uh, I think I'm going to end this video here. Uh, next time, Inside the Veil.